Let's talk about light types here in Cinema 4D. Let me go ahead and create a quick little scene here. So I'm going to put a floor object in here. I'm going to put a cube in here, and I'm also going to put a sphere in here. I'm going to move that sphere over like that. Let me go to middle mouse. I'm going to select these two objects, put them on top of the floor, something like that. I'm going to come over here, create a couple of materials. I'm going to create a red material. I'm going to create another material. I'm just double clicking here and double clicking the material. Click this, select a blue color. Anything's fine. We'll double click one more time and we will select. In this one, we'll go to the texture, we'll go to surfaces. Let me pull that up so that you can see it. Go to surfaces and we'll choose checkerboard. This isn't the material section, but we'll just go through real quick how to apply materials. So we'll take the checkerboard, we'll apply it to the cube in the scene. That's one way to apply materials. We'll take the red object or the red color and we'll apply it to the sphere over here in the object manager. That's another way to do it. And then we'll just take the blue material, we'll select that and we'll drop it on the floor. Let's go ahead and click back there in the perspective view. Okay, so now if we come over here and we render our scene, we see that we have a very flat scene, not much going on. So let's go ahead and drop a light into the scene. And we will pick that up now. So basically, we have gotten rid of our default lighting that's in the scene, and we have put our own light in the scene. So now we can see what we've got going on here. And this is a pretty good example of how when you don't have shadows in the scene, it looks like things are just kind of floating. If I come over here and put a shadow in the scene and render that again, all of a sudden, it looks like things are sort of not floating in the air anymore. They're sort of stuck to the ground. All right, let me turn that off for now. Now, right now, we're dealing with an omni light. So if we select our light, we can come over here and we can see that that's an omni light. So we wanted to change that to a spotlight. If we click render again, well, everything's sort of black, and that's because our spotlight is not pointing at our object. So we could select the spotlight and we could sort of move it around and twist it here play around with the parameters on the light try to get something and try to get it pointed where we wanted to or we could do something much easier which is come over here to the camera view and select set active object as camera. So whatever you have selected in the scene, it's going to use that as the camera view. So now we can come over here like we were actually working with a camera and get this set up exactly the way we want, which is a much easier way to work. So we've got this set up. Let's say that that's what we want. All we do now is go back and say use camera default camera. If we take a look at our scene, we can see light is now in the exact same position as we had it when we were looking through it. So now we can click render and we have the spotlight working. Now I think we ought to render this again and go ahead and turn on the spotlight and have the shadows turned on. So we'll render that again and that looks much, much better. Now let's take a look at some of the parameters with the spotlight that are things that you should know about. So if we come over here to our details, you can see that we have an inner angle. And you can see what that's doing. It's creating fall off between the inner angle and the outer angle. We have our outer angle, so you can control that here. If you need to get a much wider path of light, you can do that using the outer angle and the inner angle. All right, go ahead and select the light again. The aspect ratio is going to allow you to stretch and shear the light's cone. So if we did something like that and rendered, then you're going to get something a little bit different here. So with contrast, you can adjust how soft or how hard that you want the lit surface transition to be. So we can pull that up, something crazy. And you can see the difference we have there. Let's take that back to zero. 
Now we're not going to really deal with the shadow caster in this title, but the shadow caster will allow you to add shadows or cast shadows without adding illumination to the scene. And we have our different types of fall off here. We have none and inverse square. Inverse square is physically accurate. This simulates real world lighting. And we have a few others that we're not going to deal with at this time. Pull a little further down here. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Let me go ahead and adjust that over here. Details, inner angle. Let's take this outer angle up to something like that. Our inner angle like that. Let's try to go ahead and pull these out. Let's go back down here. And let's have some fall off again, inverse square. Let's go ahead and render that. Now, if we check colored edge and use gradient, we can actually have a gradient fall off. Let's say red to blue. Something like that. And we can play around with our gradient. So you can see we have some red to blue here. You can barely see the blue. Let's go ahead and adjust our light a little bit more. Let's go with the outer angle like this and the inner angle like that. Now you can see that a little more clearly, the blue to red. This is more for artistic purposes. I don't see how you would really have much use for this, but it's there if you need it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that light. And let's check out another light. Let's come over here and grab a target light. This is very similar to the spotlight that we just used. So let's go ahead and go into our light again like we did last time. So that we can see what we're going to illuminate. Maybe spin around this. Something like that. Make this outer angle a little bigger. Now let's go back to our default camera view. Now, with this particular light, the nice thing is we have a target attached to it. So we can come over here and we can move the target and the light's going to follow. So this is really nice for animation purposes. If we had something animated, in fact, let's go ahead and do this. Let's move our cube in the scene. So let's start the cube right here. And I know that we haven't really talked about animation yet. We will, but let's go ahead and just set some keyframes by control or command clicking here. And then I'll move forward to say frame 30. And I'll just move this guy over here. And then I'll go ahead and put some more keyframes down. So now we have a real basic animation. And what I could do is I could take my target light and put it underneath my cube and then zero this out. And now, because the target of the light is a child of the cube, it's going to follow the cube, the target is. And then the light is going to follow the target. So now we have something like this. You can see the light is going to follow that anywhere it goes. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of that. So we'll get rid of the light and we'll get rid of the target. Let's take a look at the area light. Pull that up and over here. So the light rays from an area light expand from all points on its surfaces outwards in all directions. A rectangular computer screen is a good example of such a light. Now, whereas when you're dealing with an omni light, you can put the omni light anywhere in the scene, you actually need to point your light or your area light in the direction that you want it to illuminate. So if we just click on here like that, we're not getting a very good result. So let's go ahead and select that light. And again, let's go into set active object. Let's go ahead and get this light so that it's illuminating 
these objects a little bit better. Yeah, maybe like that. We'll go back to our default camera. All right, so that's looking a little bit better. Go back to the general tab and let's have it cast an area light. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, something else important to remember about this particular light is the size of the light actually matters in this one. So if we select the light, we can make this light much bigger and it's going to have an effect on what we're seeing or of how much light is being thrown out. Okay, so just remember that when you're dealing with this particular light, the size of the light and the shape of the light have a large effect on what you're going to see in your scene. In fact, let's take a look at some of the parameters that you're going to deal with here. So let's go to details and right here you can see we have an area shape. Right now it's rectangle, but we can change these to something else. Do a render, you're going to get a little different result. Okay, so let's take a look at this and take a look at the shadow options that we have. So let's pull this up a little bit more and come down here and look at the shadows. And we can see what our shadows are looking like here. So let's go to the shadow tab and we can control the density. So if we wanted that much denser, we could pull that up and we get something like that. I'm going to say 80 might be good. We can control the color of our shadows. So if you, again, doing some sort of artistic work and you needed something that looked a little different, you could do that here. I'm going to stick with a dark shadow. The accuracy of our shadows. Let's turn that up to 100%. Let's turn our samples up to 400 and minimum samples to 64. So maybe turn this up to 128. Actually, let's try 256. Render that again. Now we're getting a much nicer, accurate shadow here. Now just remember, when you're working with the area shadows, you're going to get a better result, but it's at the cost of the render time. So just keep that in mind. Now remember, you can change your shadows at any time. Area are typically the best, but if you wanted a quicker render, you can always go to Shadow Map, and you're going to get something like that. If the quality of your shadow is not what you want, you can always take that up so you have options here. I'm just going to take this up to 1,000 by 1,000, and you're going to get a little bit better shadow then. Okay, so these are some of the basic light types here in Cinema 4D.